Welcome back, everybody. We're going to do one more video before the weekend starts, and I should have also silenced the notifications, but um, in any case, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the logical conclusion of the whole Russiagate fiasco. Now, I want to assure you that just because the Russiagate stuff and the collusion theories and all of that is going to fall apart, basically, uh, it doesn't mean that people are suddenly going to uh, come clean and say, well, we were wrong about the Donald Trump campaign. The people are going to shift and decide, well, we need to investigate him for something else, or that the very fact that he was suspected of being a Russian agent is is evidence that it needs to be fully investigated anymore. And I've talked to people who actually believe in that. So let me explain to you what's been happening, okay? Uh, I believe it was yesterday or today, the Trump nominee for Attorney General of the U.S., Mr. Uh, William Barr, was officially confirmed by the Senate by a 54 to 45 vote. Uh, I believe Rand Paul was the lone Republican who voted against him. And you did have two Democrats, that would be Joe Manchin and Doug Jones, voted for him, essentially giving him uh, more than a, a patina of legitimacy. Because the fact is that, yes, William Barr, I think that there are some issues, given that he was involved in the drug war, but those are not the ones pertaining to today. Now you have, essentially, an attorney general who is completely unrelated to the goings-on during the Russiagate uh, fiasco. You have to remember, what was one of the reasons that Donald Trump <coughs> was so handcuffed with regards to these investigations? Well, the people who were proposing and promulgating all of these ridiculous rumors of Russian collusion, they were claiming that Jeff Sessions, by virtue of the fact that as a sitting senator in the U.S. Senate, he had met with the ambassador for Russia in an official capacity that that was evidence that he could be um, in a conflict of interest over the Russia investigation, neglecting to mention the fact that almost every senator in the U.S. Senate has to meet with ambassadors from these countries, whether it's Russia or, let's say, Vietnam or Thailand or whoever, and that's part of the job. But they still, they persisted, and Jeff Sessions, being the weakling that he was, recused himself from the investigation, leaving who to be the person uh, handling the, you know, handling, handling the football as far as the Russia investigation or whatever was going on at the time. Who was doing it? It was Rod Rosenstein. And as you can probably see from the thumbnail <coughs> of this video, Rod Rosenstein is also deeply involved in this because Andrew McCabe, the deputy director of the FBI, the person who is alleged to have received uh, for his, his wife, actually his wife received um, a significant donation from a Clinton super PAC for her own legislative election in Virginia. <coughs> he has admitted that Rod Rosenstein had stepped forward among DOJ officials, DOJ and FBI officials, to volunteer to wear a wire in order to record the president saying something crazy so that the 25th Amendment could be invoked and have him removed from office. For those of you that are not aware, the 25th Amendment, okay, broadly speaking, I'm not going to go into every single issue because I don't have enough time, but the 25th Amendment is largely... Uh, directed to address issues of where a president might be in a state of ill health or possibly, uh, you know, for example, um, some sort of, you know, in, in any way incapacitated, but typically it would be a health related reason and he would have to be removed from office by the cabinet and the vice president <coughs> and replaced. So they were trying to orchestrate that them and not the elected officials of the U.S. Congress, which is what an impeachment is, and not the actual members of the cabinet. And they were actually, according to 
McCabe's own testimony, which you, or not testimony, but his statements in this interview with Scott Pelley, <coughs> he was actually among those that was counting heads to see who among the cabinet members was going to uh, vote in favor of removing Donald Trump. Plus, by the way, you have to remember that the president can also decide, well, I don't, I'm not going to allow these people to vote me out. I can just fire them. The, the president could fire all these people who were in his cabinet, like Linda Chow, like uh, Ben Carson, for example. I'm not, I'm not finger pointing at any of these people. I'm just saying that all those people, they work for him. They work at his pleasure and he could have fired them. But in any case, let's hear what McCabe said to Scott Pelley. He was fired. I was speaking to the man who had just run for the presidency and, and, and won the election for the presidency and who might have done so with the aid of the government of Russia, our most formidable adversary on the world stage. And that was something that troubled me greatly. How long was it after that that you decided to start the obstruction of justice and counterintelligence investigations involving the president? I think the next day I met with the team investigating the Russia cases and uh, I asked the team to go back and conduct an assessment to determine where are we with these efforts and what steps do we need to take going forward. I was very concerned that I was able to put the Russia case on absolutely solid ground in an indelible fashion that were I removed quickly or reassigned or fired that the case could not be closed or uh, vanish in the night without a trace. I wanted to make sure that our case was on solid ground and if somebody came in behind me and closed it and tried to walk away from it, they would not be able to do that without creating a record of why they'd made that decision. You wanted a documentary record. That's right. That those investigations had begun because you feared that they would be made to go away. That's exactly right. The White House responded to the opening of that investigation, calling it a completely baseless investigation. But now we're hearing directly from McCabe as he tells. So Andrew McCabe is basically this this whole interview is going to be aired next Monday. And I think it should be revelatory as to how serious this whole collusion thing ended up getting. Um, I believe it doesn't say that the, there's no footage of it in this clip. But in that clip, he actually contradicted a statement made by Rosenstein. Uh, I, I think Rosenstein might have even said it in Congress. I could be wrong. That when Rosenstein stepped forward and volunteered to wear a wire, he said, well, I was only saying this uh, sarcastically. According to what I've understood, this interview will disprove that, or at least McCabe will contradict that statement and say that there was a serious deliberation to do that. And if indeed Rosenstein had lied under oath to Congress by saying, well, I didn't seriously consider doing this, then you would actually see all of these rats are going to be basically pointing fingers at each other. There is no way that you can now seriously consider the FBI and DOJ to have conducted themselves in a professional manner throughout this entire saga. Because if they did, they wouldn't be lying under oath or, or, or pointing fingers at each other, saying things that, that uh, basically contradict something that another one has said. They would all have had their story straight. And that's simply not the point. That, that's not the case because they have to realize at this point that somebody is going to face the consequences for this fruitless investigation. There are a lot of people who are very... Uh, pissed off. And also, you have to remember that Rosenstein himself had announced not long ago that he was going to retire once the new attorney general was sworn in or, <clears throat> or you know, within the a short period of time afterward. Rosenstein, <clears throat> in, in, my, in my estimation, okay, I could be wrong, has been basically squeezed by the Trump administration back into line and is, he, he's basically probably handed to them any sort of leverage that these people who were behind the FBI and DOJ investigations had had. So he's probably provided the Trump administration with all sorts of evidence that they were concocting this, this nonsense and that they were going to target his, his uh, cabinet members, whether it's uh, Flynn or whether it's, uh, yeah, or, or even his son, by the way. 
So this is going to be a very, very difficult pill to swallow for mainstream news and the people who who watch it. I, I personally don't really watch them, and I don't, I don't know why you would at this point. They're going to have to live with the knowledge that a lot of these people who were mounting this investigation have completely tainted it. How can you prosecute somebody based on this type of track record when you have somebody who is elected into office and all you have is innuendo that he may have cooperated with some person and some, you know, at some point, sometime, that is not grounds for an investigation. That is not grounds for turning their life upside down as they did with Michael Flynn. And <clears throat> the fact is that now that this is happening, they're going to be basically um, put through the gauntlet. <clears throat> You're going to see some of these media figures who were major Ru Russiagate promulgators. Their, their audience will probably dry up within a few weeks or something. You know, they're the mainstream audience. They'll always have those diehard people that will say, no, it's absolute. I mean, this this the, the the fact the investigation was tainted doesn't matter. The fact is that he 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 must have collaborated with Russia. We just have to continue investigating. There will always be the diehard Russia Gators. It will continue for the for until the end of time. Who knows? Because it's the same thing as as happens with other um, apocryphal stories that happen in American history. There's always a certain set of people that want to believe that something that is known to have happened in one way was actually not, it, it didn't happen that way, okay? You have that with the moon landing, okay? Not judging anyone who, uh, who, who's against thinking, believing in the moon landing. I'm just saying that it's a debate that continues even despite the discovery of, of certain things that confirm it, okay? There's, it's the same issue with people who believe in um, you know, some of these uh, theories about 9-11, okay, not all the theories, but some of the theories just can never be proven. There is no way to prove them unless you have a time machine or you have somebody step forward and document and confess that they did something. Okay, so <clears throat> that's about it for today. I want you to like the video. I want you to subscribe to the channel, share the video. Also, subscribe to me on BitChute and CocoScope and all the social media. <clears throat> that you see in the description. Have a good night.